Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Nina Acosta, who's the founder and CEO of Transcend the Light. And we'll be talking about getting out of the constant cycle of anxiety and stress. Nina, welcome back to the program. Hi, thank you so much for having me again. I'm happy to be here. You're welcome. And I guess I'm sort of excited about talking about this because getting out of anxiety and stress means that people are in anxiety and stress. And I know that we all are. I mean, and, and we do it to ourselves. And I want to talk about the ways that we do it to ourselves and then the ways we can get out of it. So I, I think this is going to be a really spectacular conversation. So get us started with uh, in your experience when you're working with your clients. Um, what are you noticing about um, anxiety and stress? Yeah. So that's a great question. Everybody's different, but one key component that I'm noticing when my, my clients come to me with anxiety and stress is that they're stuck in their mind, right? And they're not living in the present and they, their mind is kind of like scattered brain is going everywhere. They're thinking about scenarios that may never even happen and like having conversations that they should have had or, thinking that, you know, the world's going to end, they're really trapped in their mind and they're not present in their body and they're not slowing down to get that inner peace that they desire. You know, that's a, a mouthful right there. I think we can go about nine and a half hours on that one statement. But the one thing that comes to my mind is this. I've always heard when I, you know, I'm a constant reader and, and self-improvement and life coaching and all of those great things because we never, ever truly arrive. It's just like, let's polish here and polish there. And, and even yourself, I, we were right, talking right before recording, you're heading out to Colorado for a retreat for improving yourself personally and professionally. So we always, always are improving. But here's um, something that I want to get your opinion on because I've heard it said that when you feel um, anxiety and stress, Many times it's because you have set the wrong mental frame of reference. So as an example, mm-hmm. let's use, I don't know, use the example of, you know, your, your, I don't know, your, the way that it's, something should have gone at work. Well, you might have set the bar, set the frame of reference to be perfection. And when it falls just a little bit underneath that, it's like, oh, my word, it was horrible and, and things were catastrophic. But you set your frame of reference at perfection and it failed just below that. But in reality, anyone else would look at it and go, wow, that was amazing. And you just have set the bar too high. Is that part of what we're talking about here? Um, that is one thing that I've noticed, too, within my clients is that, yes, they do have high standards for themselves, but, you know, lower standards for everybody else, right? Um, and so that can, that's something about, like, getting in tune to your authentic self and what roles you have around, you know, your life and who you are, because perfection, perfectionism is something that yeah. a lot of the women that come to me do struggle with, right? And perfectionism can come from many different areas. It can come from the rules that they set themselves from a certain event or trauma that happened into their life. And so they think that everything has to be perfect, you know, in every area of their life when it comes to parenting, being a businesswoman, you know, whatever the case may be, baking, you know, like everything has to be completely perfect because they have this internal need for validation, right, from the external world instead of going inside. So, yes. In a roundabout way, you know, that was kind of like a long answer, but <laughs> that is how perfectionism is created. Yeah. And um, so it's really tapping into, like, what are the rules that they have in their life? What is creating the anxiety and stress? Because it is, that's where it usually comes from. And also, if they are truly living, like, you have the practical side of, Yes, there are things that you can do to get out of that anxiety and stress, but then you also have, like, where is that anxiety and stress really coming from? What's the root? Yes. So then um, let's let's dial into how do you find the root. And what I would say is if you can define how you work with clients on finding that root, and then a follow-up to that is, as you were talking there, you were mentioning women, 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 because you focus on female entrepreneurs. Um I'm certain that there are certain nuances that is 
are different than how a woman would get to the root of a problem than how a man would. So what are some of the things that you're finding that you want, need to make sure that you're bringing up when you're working with your female entrepreneurs to make sure that it's really resonating with them? Yeah, so the methodologies that I use are, I just mainly focus my audience as women, but we work with men or women. And so what it is, is we basically dive into, like by asking, you can ask yourself questions, you know, um, in that moment, you know, be present and ask yourself questions like, why am I feeling this anxiety and stress? What, what are the thoughts that are coming into my head? You know, because a lot of times if we slow down and be present, as I mentioned before, we can, we can hear ourselves think right? Because a lot of times we are in our headspace. And it's usually you're telling yourself a lot of times it's negative self talk, you know, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. So everybody's different. But if you just slow down and be present, and basically, and it can only, you know, it just takes 30 seconds to really just tune in to that moment and figure out like, what are you telling yourself? What are the thoughts coming into your head? And then why are those thoughts coming into my head? And where did those thoughts come from? It's like kind of like almost like, the who, what, when, where, why, you know, we learned in elementary school Yeah, is like asking those questions and tuning into what comes up for you in that moment and getting into the root and journaling. I, I mean, I don't really like to call it journaling, but journaling is a good practice or documenting whatever resonates with you, you know, voice notes. It doesn't have to be like, you know, sitting down, taking an hour a day, especially when you're busy, you know, it could be just pulling up your notepad and your phone, typing in yeah. something, what you're feeling to document it, you know, do a little voice note, have some type of recording um, to really tune in to why you're feeling that anxiety and stress. And it kind of like asking those questions will lead you to where it's coming from and then creating new rules around that. Um, I think that's huge. I like the tactical tip that you bring up of like, okay, how do you do it? First, you need to discipline yourself to pause and be aware and notice the who, what, when, why, and how, and to what extent. Um, and then it might just be like, okay, we always have our phone with us. So what little, you know, do you use Evernote or do you use whatever? Um, and, and for me, I would say, okay, yeah, I can push a button and speak this, but am I going to go back through and listen to this audio, this audio? So for me, it would be like, okay, I would pull up, pull up Evernote for my, you know, awareness, you know, uh, check-ins throughout the day. And I would put the date and go, Hey, um, I just was noticing this and then I'm right back to work. So I think that's a huge takeaway is when you're doing this to have something to track. Um, and then what are your recommendations on once you're starting to notice a trend and some similarities? Um, what, what do you do about it? How, how do you take action on that? Yeah, so once you start noticing basically some similarities or you even start to get to the root of it is creating new rules. So this is like a really quick exercise that I give my clients and it tends to work because a lot of times we, when we write things down, you know, it, it helps our brain processes it. And um, so a lot of times it's a quick, it's a quick, quick, quick um, exercise that you can just pull out a sheet of paper and I just have them split the paper in half and basically write down the old rules that they have or the negative self-talk and then more elevated version of it. And then as you write that down, you're starting to integrate it into yourself. And so basically they're starting to realize what they've been telling them themselves is not true. You know, there is yeah. really no evidence of it. You know, if you really like look at it, like I am not worthy, all the stuff that comes in their head. I was like, when is there a time that that's been true? And then usually yeah. the answer is like, uh, I don't know. I'm like, so they create like a more elevated version of that, you know, that I am worthy, I'm deserving. It's different for everybody. And I do help them with that, you know, because it definitely does for it to stick have to resonate with you and your soul. It has to be something that you actually believe. And depending on where you are in the journey, that might look different. Yes. Yeah, that's a really, really good point because it's different for everybody. And and here's the other interesting thing. Haven't you ever watched a movie before and, and you've seen it a couple, three times and then you pick up something like, oh, hey, I forgot about that part or, ooh, that's a new perspective and same with reading a book. Well, the same with our, you know, noticing things and we might be in a different headspace because, oh, we just came out of a whatever tough time at work. And now I'm noticing this about this, uh, um, you know, feeling that I had or this thought or this struggle. And so I think it's always neat to realize that 
we don't ever check a box and like done, never going to come up again, or this is the way it always is for me. It's fluid, right? It is. Yeah, it is always fluid. You know, with that, because we're always evolving and growing, especially if you do want to be on the you know personal development journey, it's always fluid. And with everything that we do, like even our goals and our affirmations and everything like that, they're always going to change, right? So it's good to always take a look at, at it, you know, maybe again in 30 days and revisit and it might change for you. Yes. Okay, good. So now let's move into um, talking about creating an, uh, an unapologetic life on your own terms. That's something you work with your clients on. So define unapologetic life and how do you create one? Because that number one is something that's unique and it really, to me, gives me the feeling of you putting this whole barrier around yourself so that it doesn't matter what people think or say about you. Here's me and I'm moving forward and I'm not checking every move against what this person might think or that person might think. Yeah. Yeah. So what that means is basically, you know, as we mentioned before, getting in touch with your most authentic self, unraveling everything that comes to thoughts, the emotions and the energy that is not yours. Right. And really finding who you are at your core, because a lot of times, what I have found working with my clients is a lot of people create goals and they, you know, create a, a vision in their head of a life that they think that they want, but it's not really truly authentic. It doesn't resonate with them and they go after their goals. And once they're there, they're like not satisfied. Right. And because that goal was probably mostly something that they were taught or to go after, you know, like it could be from conditioning from society. It could come from many different places. And so what that actually means is getting to the core of who you want to be. Because the thing is, is like we all think that we're chasing material things, right? We all think that we want certain things, but that's not actually what we're going for. We're looking for a frequency and emotion that resonates with us. So we're looking for like success, right? So success means several different things to different people. But what we're looking for really is that peace, that joy, that happiness, that abundant life. And once you start creating that internally, what happens is your external world starts to reflect what you're creating internally. Um, reminds me of the old saying, um, you know, if you want a want a friend, you need to be a friend, or if you 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 need to be the change you want to see in the world. So it kind of all starts inside because the you know it it, it sounds woo woo to say thoughts are things, but in reality, um, it thoughts lead to things because if a thought remains in your mind you and you mull over it and you're like, ooh, that would be nice if I, and then you write it down and then you start noticing things around you like, ooh, I should take that um, course on that thing that I thought about and, and I start talking to some friends. So it really is what you just said is so powerful because once you start making those improvements inside, then things start changing outside. And many of the times it's just your perspective of the things change. It's not really the things themselves changed, right? Yeah, well, it's your perspective of the things, and it's also the, like, frequency that you're putting out into the world, right? Because you said thoughts are things, or thoughts are necessarily things, but thoughts do have a frequency. So, yeah. like, if it's a good frequency, or if it can be also a negative frequency, and that's why a lot of times a lot of people struggle, is because they never get to the root cause of their thoughts, and so those thoughts keep reappearing and manifesting itself, and it keeps creating a, a pattern of self-sabotage in their life. So it's, that's why it's, like, really important to get to the root of what you're thinking and creating that, you know, that, that emotional space um, within yourself to create the truly authentic, beautiful life that you desire. And that looks different for everybody. So what do you say to someone that would go, I agree with everything you're saying right there, and I have tried this before, and it, I, it just, I can't do it. I can't picture even what I want, or I can't, um, I, if you ask me, what is it that you really want your ultimate dreams and desires, and I, I just don't know. So they, it's almost like a mental block there, in my opinion, yeah. but I know that's a thing. Yeah, it is a thing, and I've had clients that say that. And so basically what I do is I work with them because if you hold a deep, unconditional space of love for your clients, they will eventually open up to you. And a lot of times when you say, I don't know, you actually do know. You just don't want to voice it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And so 
it's really like digging in, you know, and uh, sometimes my clients do get triggered by me, but that's, that's what I'm here to do to help them create whatever it is that they want to create. And, and there is a process for that, but it's really, you always know a lot of times if you really check in with yourself, you're just not ready to say it, you know, like you're just not yeah. ready to vocalize it. it so you know, I, it reminds I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I think that sometimes I honestly say, you know, but what if you didn't know? Because they used to yeah. know. Usually I've heard that before. Down. It's almost like something triggers in your mind. Like, what if you did know? You, and then you're like, well, in a perfect world, if I did know, then I guess it would be this. And and then that's yeah. like, it was there all along. <laughs> right. Back in the day, I, I went through a sales training program, and they would say to ask these levels and layers of questions like, you know, hey, what's important about, you know, saving money to you? And they're like, well, I want to, um, you know, take vacation this year. And many people would go, oh, that's the most important thing. Let's talk about vacation. But in reality, if you ask, well, what's important about a vacation to you? And it's like, um, oh, well, it's uh, about getting away from work. And, well, that's even t- – it tends to be important. But, well, what's important about that? And what's re- and you go deep, 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 and each response is right. like, well, what's important about that is – and ultimately it's like – because I want to spend time with my father who's dying and we didn't have a good childhood. And, right. and now yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? That now is, and sometimes it is like baby steps. It's like, don't try to do the whole thing all at once or don't try to tell me the whole, you know, your life dream. All, but what's this, which then leads to this. And then it just starts to be like, okay, now you kind of get your, get your momentum going. Yeah. And that's great that you mentioned that. Cause that's so true because, and also, and you have to ask those questions because you have to realize that, Everybody has a different worldview and a different perspective because we have all had different experiences, you know, as we were growing up. So people perceive things differently. So it's really important to find out what does that actually mean to you or to my client, you know? What, and I ask them that just to kind of like dig a little deeper because everything has a different meaning. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what do you find is some of the best ways that if you, if you have someone that's like, okay, I'm tired of anxiety and stress. And I do want to live an unapologetic life on my own terms. And I'm seeing that you're telling me to do these things. What's the first place that you have people to to start? Well, the first place I would have I would have people to start is really, you know, finding a coach, right? Finding a coach yeah. because you need to be accountable to somebody. And it, it's so helpful to have a coach that resonates with you, you know, and that's important too. Like, not to still find any coach, just find a coach that resonates with you. And you can, like, when you hear their messaging, it's like they're speaking to you. And that's super important for integration. Um, number two, I would say some quick things to do the exercises that I mentioned. They can do it, all, you know, by themselves. But you also want that accountability, too, also. Especially, I found a lot of times my clients that are in that space, they have um, lost some trust within themselves because they don't follow through, Right. And yeah. so that's why it's important to find a coach to help you follow through on what you're trying to do. But you can do the exercises that I mentioned, but also on the fly, you know, and things that do work is it doesn't have to be based. It doesn't have to be something difficult. You always have breath work exercises that you can do. You can, you know, breathe in for five, hold for five and release for five um, and do it until you feel like you're back into what I like to call, you know, your heart space out of your head. And um, you can do it with counting down as well. But another thing, another method that I learned from an energy healer in Sedona is tapping in between um, your, like where your, your, you know, your breasts are. There's like an in-between space. It's like tapping there when you're feeling anxiety and stress. Um, for really for like a minute or two and that completely relieves it um, mm. until you're ready to go back, you know, and dive in a little deeper. Awesome. Well, I think what you said about a coach sounds uh, cliche because it's like, oh, you need a coach. But so many times it, that's just the case because you're too close to yourself to realize things about yourself. And you might, uh, you know, you've, you've seen the, the th- movies on TV where, where someone goes into the psychiatrist and they um, – you know, sit down and they're like, okay, well, tell me about yourself. I'm like, what, what about, no, just tell me about, it. and they, they do that for the reason to say, where's your, where are you, where are you going to start? And there's so many things that someone would listen for to go, Ooh, they're thinking this way. And then you ask a question and you're too close to the forest to see the trees. So having that coach that has dealt with these similar 
successes and they can draw you through and guide you through these kind of things and to have a coach like let's say yourself like i said at the beginning of this conversation where you didn't just learn something back in the 90s and you're just kind of regurgitating it over and over you're constantly yourself being improved and sharpened you're going to an event this weekend and that's the the mark of a true champion so i think that's a huge piece for people to consider as well yeah, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. It, it does sound cliche, and for the longest time, I didn't think I needed a coach either, right? <laughs> um, and so, but once I entered the world, that's, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I evolved so quickly was because I had a coach. I mean, I've been on the couch, too, with psychologists, and I would make little shifts. And because I was never really getting to the root cause, and I was just putting a Band-Aid on it, you know? I was just like, oh, there's a Band-Aid. And I would take a couple steps forward. And it wasn't really until, like, I was, like, at the point where I'm tired of being in my pain and I'm ready to live an unapologetic yeah. life on my own terms, you know, that I was, like, okay, what? Yep. When it's, uh, I've heard it said, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's when, you know, the, the, the teacher will appear. And that – oh, did I lose you? Nope, I'm still here. So, uh, you know, having that having that coach relationship is important. In fact, it, it reminds me of think about your your favorite sports star that's the greatest of all time in whatever sport. They've got a coach. In fact, they probably have three or four. Yeah, they do. And it's it's just an always, you know, it's going to be a progression. Yeah. And and you you know, again like the sports uh analogy uh, you might think, you know, the the top of the top of the top of the game, what else do they – they're already winning, you know, 20 Wimbledons or two Super Bowls. What do they need to know? Well, it's, re, you know, polishing and staying on top. So having that mindset of it's not just for the elite athletes, it's for people that want to improve themselves is having that coach relationship is so strong. Well, I tell you what, Nina, we, we kind of wrap up here with uh, um, bringing it all down to if someone is interested in exploring your coaching, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you and learn more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you they can visit my website. It's um, transcendthelight.com. Um, there is a contact form on it. It goes to my email and I will reach out or you can email me directly at info at transcendthelight.com. Awesome. Nina, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah, it was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.